Hey everyone, Kelly here. I'm back with another book haul video. I know, I know, girl has a problem, but <laughs> I had to do it, okay? I just got a new job, so it was kind of like a little celebratory slash pick-me-up gift because like I've said in other videos, I am really, really busy right now, super stressed. So I thought I'm gonna treat myself because I just got a new job, why not? So anyways, before I get started, I just wanna remind everyone to please like and subscribe below if you like the content I bring you. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I have my trusty scalpel here. I have yet another book outlet order. I'm just covering the shipping label so you don't know where I live, cause yeah. All right, let's get started. I love using this scalpel. I don't know why I didn't use it before, but now that I have used it, I'm never going back. I know it says don't use a box cutter <laughs> and like a big design on the box, but we'll just be careful, right? I mean, some of these books are bound to be damaged anyway because it's from Book Outlet. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, we're in. So excited. I'm sure my cats are gonna come down any minute because they love boxes and they love paper. <sighs> okay, <laughs> where do I get started? Let's just dive right on in. The first book I picked up from Book Outlet was What the Woods Keep by Katya de Becerra, I believe. Let me know if I'm saying this wrong. It just sounded really, really cool and I love that cover. Very ominous. So on the back of the book, it says, to my daughter, Hayden Bellatrix Holland, on her 18th birthday, I bequest my family estate known as the Holland Manor upon three conditions. My first condition is that Hayden looks for the gifts I left her at the manor. My second condition is that Hayden uses my gifts to destroy my darkest secret. My third condition is that Hayden trusts no one where my treasure is concerned, especially the ravens. I have never heard of this author. I've never heard of this book. But again, this is kind of why I like Book Outlet because it helps me find books that I'm not seeing all the time on Goodreads or from friends of mine. Um, not that I don't enjoy Goodreads because I do and it is dangerous for my wallet and my sanity. But um, <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I like finding new finds that I wouldn't have found. Otherwise, wow, Kelly, words. Um, look at this beautiful spine there. Am I doing it right with the mirroring? I'll find out <laughs> when I look at this video for editing. But it looks kind of like Blair Witch Project symbols here. I wonder, I think they're like rune symbols. Um, but yeah, so this is like a YA horror thriller. And it's about this girl Hayden who inherits her childhood home when she's 18 from her mother but she has to uncover its dark secrets. So that's really all I know about it. Like I said, I've never heard of this book. I just was intrigued by the cover and by the synopsis when I found it on Book Outlet. And I'm excited to give it a go. I've been, I don't know, I've been reading a lot of romances lately because I'm so stressed and I just need to like get, some, get through something happy, light, you know, get away for a second. Um, but I also really want to read more thrillers and horror books to an extent because I am a chicken. But uh, yeah, I think as soon as I'm done being super busy, I'm going to like just fully dive into a lot of my thrillers. So this is the debut novel for this author and it says she combines mystery, science fiction and dark fantasy in a twisty story that will keep you mesmerized right up to the final page. I can't wait. So if you have read this or you've heard of it, let me know what you thought because I'm really interested. I hope this doesn't let me down. This next book I have, it's been on my TBR for a while now and I've heard some really, really great things about it. And that would be The Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. This has been getting a lot of praise, even just looking at the back. I mean, first of all, look at this beautiful cover. Like, wow, just stunning. And even the back, I love the design of the leaves and the flowers, kind of like an old wallpaper. Um, but the praise in the back, we have things like a gorgeous tale that will steal your heart. This is not only a keeper, but a classic. And that's from Robin Lefevers, bestselling author of the His Fair Assassin trilogy. I don't know that trilogy. Um, <laughs> 
We also have A Jewel of a Story by shining a light on the lives of those whom history usually ignores. Stacey Lee gives us a marvelous gift, an entirely new and riveting look at our past. And that's from Candace Fleming, who is the award-winning author of The Family Romanov. Cool, cool. So quickly, just to let you know what this book is about, it is a historical fiction, and it's about a 17-year-old girl named Jo Kwan, who works as a lady's maid for the cruel daughter of one of the wealthiest men in Atlanta. But by night, Jo moonlights as the pseudonym, pseudonymous, pseudonymous, oh my god. She moonlights as the pseudonymous author of a newspaper advice column for the genteel Southern lady, Dear Miss Sweetie. Oh my god. Dear Miss Sweetie. Gotta say it, I don't know. Is that a Southern accent? Dear Miss Sweetie. I'm thinking like, you know, gone with the wind, crap. But anyways, when her column becomes wildly popular, she uses the power of the pen to address some of society's ills, but she's not prepared for the backlash that follows when her column challenges fixed ideas about race and gender. While her opponents clamor to uncover the secret identity of Miss Sweetie, a mysterious letter sets Joe off on a search for her own past and the parents who abandoned her as a baby. But when her efforts put her in the crosshairs of Atlanta's most notorious criminal, Joe must decide whether she, a girl used to living in the shadows, is ready to step into the light. Oh, oh my gosh! This sounds so good! And also, step into the light reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. Step into the light, she said. And he's like, oh. and she's like, oh, you're a beast. But anyways, she's not gonna be a beast. Look at her, she's beautiful. She is, I'm sure, witty, because she has her own column. Because why wouldn't she be witty? I mean, hello, women can be beautiful and witty and many other things, as we know. But yeah, I'm so excited to read this. I've heard nothing but great things. I know that I'm not usually into historical fiction, so I'm gonna have to be gentle with myself because I really wanna read this. I just, yeah, I hope this is well-written and well-paced. All right, next up, this is a book that I've been seeing around for a while on Goodreads, and at first I thought it was some like poetry thing, which I don't really do a lot of poetry, so I was a little hesitant. This is not poetry, I am happy to discover. I think I was just taken aback by the cover because it kind of reminds me of like Rupi Kaur, is that how you say her name? I don't know why, I think it's just the font reminds me of her, but this has nothing to do with her. Um, but anyways, this is Sadie by Courtney Summers. So I think a lot of people have read this. It's a New York Times bestseller, it says. And on the front, it says, if she dies, she takes the truth with her. Love it. I mean, don't love it, but I'm intrigued. <laughs> so this is a YA thriller. Let me just read you the synopsis. When popular radio personality West McRae receives a desperate phone call from a stranger imploring him to find 19-year-old runaway Sadie Hunter, he's not convinced there's a story there. Girls go missing all the time. But as soon as West's boss discovers Sadie fled home after the brutal murder of her little sister, Maddie, he sees the makings of something big and orders West to the small town of Cold Creek, Colorado to uncover what happened. Sadie has no idea that her story will soon become the subject of a blockbuster podcast. She just wants revenge. Yes, I love revenge stories, especially when they're women revenge stories. Hallelujah! Here we go. Armed with a switchblade, <coughs> Sadie follows a meager, wait a sec, it's not a switchblade, but okay. <laughs> Armed with a switchblade, Sadie follows a meager set of clues hoping they'll lead to the man who took Maddie's life because she's determined to make him pay for it with his own. But as West traces her journey to the darkest, most dangerous corners of big cities and small towns, a deeply unsettling mystery begins to unfold, one that's bigger than them both. Can he find Sadie before it's too late? <gasps> Okay, so I know that this book flips between perspectives and I believe timelines, potentially, because it's going between um, West, who is trying to find her and he's doing the podcast, and it also goes to Sadie's perspective as well. So I, oh my god, uh, oh, and the author lives and writes in Canada. I don't know if the author herself is Canadian, but... She lives here, she works here, she is Canadian to me, so cool, cool. Okay, I just picked up the next book and I don't like the feel of the cover. <laughs> I'm a little taken aback. Um, it feels a little scratchy. How's that for ASMR? Can you hear that? I don't know, I'm not into the feel. But anyways, um, <laughs> 
This is from another author who I don't really know about. I believe I have one of her books on my TBR before I found this book, but I have not read anything by her. So this book is You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. Here's the cover. Kind of cool. She's being attacked by birds, which uh, I believe they're magpies. Probably because everything on the back is talking about magpies. So why would they not be magpies? Anyways, <laughs> the tagline here is if you give a name to an impossible thing, does that make the impossible thing any less impossible? It's like a riddle. Also, impossible, impossible. <laughs> Thinking of Cinderella. Impossible. Anyone? For a plain country pumpkin. No? Okay. <sighs> Anyways, my brain. I'm like in musical mode because I have a show coming up. Anyways, so this person's name is Magpie Lewis, which I kind of like. I don't know. I kind of like it. But um, it says here, Magpie Lewis started writing in her yellow notebook the day after her father ruined her mother's life. The day after her sister skipped town and left Magpie to fend for herself. The day after Brandon Phipps' party. Now, Magpie is called a slut in the hallways of her high school. Her former best friend won't speak to her, and she spends her lunch period with a group of misfits who've also been socially exiled. And so, feeling trapped and forgotten, Magpie retreats to her notebook, dreaming up a magical place called Near. Near is perfect, a place where her father never cheated, her mother never drank, and Magpie's life never derailed. She imagines Near so completely, so fully, that she writes it into existence, right in her own backyard. At first, Nier is a peaceful escape, but it soon becomes something darker, somewhere nightmares lurk and hidden truths come to light. Soon it becomes a place where Magpie can do anything she wants, even get her revenge. So this is like magical realism, horror fantasy sort of, because she creates her own little paradise and then paradise is not what it seems. Yeah, and I mean, I know myself, I was bullied a lot as a kid. I used to write in a journal like several times a day. I haven't been writing as much lately, but yeah, I just think this is a really interesting concept. Is it original? Probably not, but I mean, there's only what, six, seven, I think seven stories in the world that you can write potentially. So yeah, I'm not bothered by that because I don't read a lot of books like this. So I'm still interested to see how this plays out. Yeah, I don't know. I think this could be good. Um, this author also wrote the book Horrid, which here's the cover on the back. This book was on my TBR. I have not read it. I don't remember what it's about really, but I loved the cover of that one. This is kind of in the same style, the cover. Yeah, we'll see. I don't read a lot of uh, magical realism, but I think this could be good. So yeah. Now for something totally different. So I, <laughs> I've been in the mood lately to read graphic novels or comics, but um, I found this one on Book Outlet and I wanted to buy it in a previous order and I didn't because some reviews were a little iffy for me, but then I found it again and it was only like $2. So I thought, why not? Because I was still interested in the premise of the story. So maybe I will like it. Maybe the people whose reviews I read just didn't like it and I will disagree. So we'll see. But this book is Piper and it is by Jay Asher and Jessica Freeberg and illustrated by Jeff Stokely. So here's the picture. I really like the style of this illustration. I haven't flipped through the book. I, I mean, I just opened the box. So I mean, how could I have seen anything? <laughs> but, oh, okay. Cute, cute. It looks a little young, but actually I think it is for kids. So that's okay, not bothered. Um, so the back of the book says, what if the boy of your dreams becomes your worst nightmare? Wow, can we not relate ladies <laughs> and men? Like, hello, but anyways. Okay, it says here, Jay Asher and co-author Jessica Freeberg brilliantly reimagined the classic Pied Piper legend as a powerful graphic novel about loneliness, love, and vengeance. Why do I have a theme of revenge and vengeance? Like, what's going on in my life right now that I'm like, I don't know, maybe I should be concerned? Hmm, not yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet. But, um, yeah, I just think, oh, like, look at this. Look at this inside flap. 
if I can open it. Into the woods. Of the... Anyways, I don't know the words. <laughs> I'm like going crazy. But it just, it looks really interesting. It was $2, so you can't beat $2. I will give it a read. I hope I like it. I believe this is a standalone. I don't think there's another one. I mean, it's about Pied Piper. So yeah, you could make it a series if you wanted. You could just take the basic story and run with it, but I don't think they did. I think this is just a one-off. But yeah, I'll let you know how, I, how it goes, if I like it or not, but I'm excited. I think it looks cute. Hopefully it's a little creepy at times and yeah, I'm excited. I love reimaginings, retellings. So yeah, and I love woods. <laughs> I love the woods and like creepy wood stories. I'll just show you the whole spread there. You can see there's trees in the back there. I hope I like this. I will let you know if I don't or if I do. Okay, so here we go. This is a book outlet order. <laughs> so far, the books were pretty in pretty good shape. This one is a little bit not in the best shape for my standards. I mean, it's not that bad, but I'm a little picky. So anyways, um, the book is Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand or Legrand. I don't know if she's French or not, um, but it's like just a little rough, like around all of the edges here. Just looks like it got a little manhandled, which, you know, some people like that, but I don't like my books to be manhandled, so. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, so this is another thriller horror book. It's YA. I was in the mood clearly from this order for thrillers and horrors. Um, and the tagline says, turn fear into power. Love it. All about that. So quickly, this is a story about three girls coming together. And it says, who are the Sawkill girls? Marion, the new girl, awkward and plain, Weighed down by tragedy and hungry for love she's sure she'll never find. Zoe, the pariah, luckless and lonely, hurting but hiding it, aching with grief and dreaming of vanished girls. Val, the queen bee, gorgeous and privileged, a heart made of secrets and a mouth full of lies. Their stories come together on the island of Sawkill Rock, where gleaming horses graze in rolling pastures and cold waves crash against black cliffs, where kids whisper the legend of an insidious monster at parties and around campfires where girls have been disappearing for decades, stolen away by a ravenous evil no one has dared to fight until now. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, this reminds me of Shea Earnshaw's The Wicked Deep because it also follows three women, sort of, because, okay, I did a video about Shea Earnshaw and her two books that are currently out. She has, I believe, three more coming out very, very soon this year. Um, but The Wicked Deep is about three sisters from the past who were drowned because they were believed to be witches. And every summer they come back on their birthday to kill people, <laughs> to drown men in the ocean or the sea. And this is not the same, clearly, from what I just read. But it's the same kind of feeling of like everyone knows about this suspicious tragic event that always happens every year. It's centered around women and yet they're kind of just victim to it. So I'm excited to see how this differs from The Wicked Deep because it does not sound that similar. It's just like giving me the vibe of it. But yeah, I love women with power. I love women getting revenge. I like women of different groups coming together to fight evil or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I'm excited. Have you read this one? Anyone? I don't know. I feel like I've seen this author somewhere else, but maybe I'm wrong. So, okay, she also wrote Fury Born, which I don't have, but I think was on my TBR. I don't know. A little disappointed with the quality of the physical copy of my book, but you know, it's, you gamble. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but it really was not a lot. So it's still worth having. And yeah, I hope I like it. I'll let you know. <gasps> no. Wow, just when you thought it couldn't get worse. <laughs> Why? Uh, okay. <laughs> so I found 
this trilogy on Book Outlet and it was very, very cheap. And I, <laughs> the first one sounded so good that I was like, I'm just gonna buy all three because it's not that much. And if I don't like it, I can give it to someone else or donate it to the library if it's under five years old. I hate that rule of our library. Okay, it is under five years old, great. So if I don't like it and I don't have anyone else to give it to, I will send it to the library. But this would be The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. I have never heard of her or this series, but I saw it on Book Outlet and I was like, I need to have this because I feel like I will love it. So it says here, Fallon is the daughter of a proud Celtic king, the sister of the legendary warrior Sorcha, and the sworn enemy of Julius Caesar. I feel like I said that wrong. Sorcha? Probably Sorcha. Please hold. Caesar's armies invaded when Fallon was a child, leaving her homeland destroyed and her beloved sister dead. On the eve of her 17th birthday, Fallon is eager to follow in her sister's footsteps and earn her place in the fearsome Canty war band. She never gets the chance. Fallon is captured and sold to an elite training school for female gladiators, owned by none other than Julius Caesar. In a cruel twist of fate, the man who shattered Fallon's family might be her only hope for survival. Now, Fallon must overcome vicious rivalries and deadly fights in and out of the arena. And perhaps the most dangerous threat of all, her forbidden yet irresistible feelings for Kai, a young Roman soldier. <laughs> I swear to God, if this is not like some steamy badass book, I'm going to be so annoyed. So annoyed. But anyways, <laughs> oh wow, the print is very, very large. I don't know if you can tell. Okay, so like I said before, I was like, well, just me thinking it can't get any worse. This cover is bent like right there. Why? Why do people do that? Anyways, so I bought all three books because just that synopsis, I was like, oh my God, there's so many elements I love. There's forbidden love. There is ancient history here. We have the ancient Romans. Love it. Um, we have a badass female protagonist, which I love. I love me a strong woman. <sighs> love it so much. <laughs> and so I bought the other two as well. So I think, yeah, the second one is The Defiant. Oh, there's my ring light. She looks so freaking cool. I'm not gonna read the back because I don't wanna ruin it for myself. And then I have the last one, which is called The Triumphant. And we've got some more badass people on the cover. Oh my God, I cannot wait. I can't wait to read these. I really hope they're good because <laughs> be so bad. But yeah, have you heard of these books? I don't know. I I tried to look them up and I think they got pretty good reviews and they got better as the series went along. But I kind of wonder sometimes when you see that if that's just because you have fans of the book who are ranking it really high. We'll see. But I thought it sounded very interesting. I haven't read a lot of books that are set in this period for young adults where it's like action-packed hopefully and also romance so I'm excited because I would totally watch this if this was a show or a movie so hey I, I'll probably read this soon because I'm digging it I'm digging the vibe I'm, I'm digging it she just looks so badass and like I want to know who Kai is I want to know I yeah I want to know I want to know I want Anyways, so that's my quick little book haul video. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.